Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I made this pull apart Olaf sugar cookie. Stay tuned and I will show you how. Alright, so here are the things that I used. The 5.5 inch Olaf cookie cutter. The black edible marker is optional. I used black, brown, and orange food coloring and some white raw icing. Alright guys, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is roll out my dough pretty thin. I say about half a centimeter. That's how thin I want this to be. If I do it any thicker, it's going to get jammed into all these little sections. Uh, it has a lot of detail, especially on the face, and it's going to get very difficult to remove your dough from these little holes there. Another thing, I did make a hole on here. Uh, I was planning to make on uh, making two, but um, it started to work better with just that one hole. Uh, I have another uh, cookie cutter that I posted on, I uh, think it was the Day of the Dead uh, cookie cutter. It doesn't have any vent holes like these. And um, what that does is when you push your cookie cutter into your dough, these holes re help release that air that gets trapped in there when you're pushing in. And when it doesn't have any, it makes it very hard to release that dough from that cookie cutter because it's gotten sucked in there. So what I did is I poked a little hole there with my X-Acto knife and I actually broke the tip of my X-Acto knife because this material is very heavy duty. It is plastic, I think, uh, but it's like a very, very uh, strong uh, material. So if you have like an electric drill or something like that that you can use to make that hole, uh, I recommend using that. I'd be very careful with, it, uh, with using like a knife or a screwdriver. You don't want to get hurt I'm trying to make a hole on here. So what I did is I just like you see there, right in between the mouth area there, I made a little hole so that will help vent out a lot of the air that gets trapped in there. Now another thing that I want to suggest is to add a lot of, of uh, flour and onto your cookie, especially the face area here, because once you um, push it in there, your the moisture of your um, dough is gonna want to get stuck in there, and this helps keep it dry and it kind of helps release it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to add some of that uh, flour on here, and then I'm going to shake it off. Right there, I'm gonna go ahead and. Press my cookie cutter and shake it just a little bit to release it all the edges and hopefully it should pop out nicely like that. If you do not poke this hole here and if you do not add the flour, it will not release like it just did now. I did a quite a few before this one and I learned from my mistakes and I end up finding out what my problems were and I fixed them and now I can get it out nice and neat so that's why I'm letting you know about that that way in case the, it happens to you where your cookie uh, dough gets stuck into your cookie cutter now you know so what I'm going to do now is with just I got this little spatula but you can use a knife I'm going to cut out, um, cut off all the little pieces, the legs or or the feet, the belly, and around the neck because I'm going to be needing these all separate. The arms do not have a, a separated section like the the other sections here that have um, the little dividers. But just go ahead and cut the two arms off like that. And so when you put this on your cookie sheet to bake, you're going to put them all separated. Uh, if you put them too close together, they're going to join. So um, just put them all separated and they will um, cook up nicely. And I do put them in there for six minutes at 390. And I do recommend keeping it on it around five, five and a half minutes because these little small pieces, the arms, the feet, and part of the hair here since they're very thin and small they'll bake and cook really quickly so uh, I do recommend keeping an eye on it so it doesn't burn. Alright guys six minutes and it's out. Do you see here the hair 
is the first thing to start getting that golden brown so the arms so I do recommend around five five and a half minutes just keep an eye on it so it doesn't get any darker than this this is okay you're going to put your icing over it so you won't even see it but you want to make sure that you don't burn your cookie so golden brown is fine so it is ready to get ice so let's get started okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and fill in the belly part and upper chest part here and the two little feet just go ahead and do that I'm using a number two again same one that I use for the face And leave these to dry for like an hour because then you're going to have to put your black uh, the buttons the like the pieces of coal or whatever it is that he has there and uh, you don't want that black to get absorbed by the white so make sure that the white has crusted enough time has had enough time to crust So let these dry and I'm going to go ahead and bring the other ones that I did last night. So I'm going to go ahead and get my number one tip in the black and this one has a little bit more of a thicker consistency because I want to keep these um, the buttons or the coal that he has on there to actually stay and not run down. So I'm not going to be using the one that I used for the mouth because that one was a little bit more on the liquid side. A tool here just in case that I need it. And I'm just going to do kind of make them a little bit, you know, like lumpy. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and okay, so now I'm gonna use my black in the tip one as well and I'm going to uh, follow the lines that the imprint of that cookie cutter gave me there are other um, Olaf cookie cutters that don't have the imprint I own one and you just gotta kind of estimate where you're gonna make your your mouth and all that it's not that hard it's not that difficult i probably if i get a chance i'll show you another olaf cookie that i will be using that particular cookie cutter that doesn't have the imprints and i'll show you how easy it is so i'm gonna let this dry uh, i like to leave it for a few hours i'll do something else and come back to it that way i give it sufficient time to dry almost completely so just go ahead and, and fill it in. And I didn't mention, this is a number two tip. It just gives it a little bit more icing. You can use a number one as well, but it just helps fill it in faster. So just fill out the whole thing. As you see, you, you don't really need all the indentations and all that because it's going to get covered up. So you pretty much have to, like I said, guesstimate where you're going to be putting your eyes and all that. So that's all you have to do. Now I'm going to let this crust a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and start doing the cheek part here because he has kind of like a, um, a lifted cheek part here and then the nose and the eyes. Guys, I'm sorry. I apologize. I accidentally... Uh, press delete instead of save on the clip where I did the hands 
So I'm just showing you a little close-up of what it looks like. I used the number one tip with a medium consistency in that brown. And just go ahead and make one line, a long line and three little fingers, little stick fingers and one kind of sticking on the side. You'll see it on the cookie. It'll have the little uh, pieces sticking out where you're going to be putting your um, icing on there. The hair is very easy as well. Just follow also the cutout of the cookie and it's just kind of like a water spout. Has one in the center and one on each side and one sticking out on the side. Very easy. So I apologize again, but it's a pretty easy step to do. So what I'm going to do now is grab it. This is like a little bit of a medium consistency in a number two. And I'm going to put the nose right where this small head part here where the eyes is meets the cheek area. This little um, area here that sticks out right in the middle right there. Like I said I had to eyeball all of this. I've done so many of these that I kind of just know where it's gonna go. And I'm going to bring this little peak down even though the carrots have a nice little uh, peak sticking out like that but it's going to puncture my bag because I am going to be sticking these in the little bags. I'm going to let this crust for a little bit and then we're going to move on to the rest. So this is what you want your peaks to look like. You still have the little peak that looks like a carrot but it's not sharp enough to where it will make a hole in your bag. 